Okay. Um, and factorial, that's the name of it, is defined by multiple of positive integers up to n, starting from 1. So, when you're thinking about n factorial, this is really fast-growing function, as if you think as a function, right? So, uh, when you're just thinking about just the 10 factorial or 30 factorial, it's really quite big number. So, when you thinking about the factorization of such number, it looks like almost impossible if you want to just use a paper and pencil. But there is a really nice trick to find it eventually. So in this video, we, we are going to just cover that part. Okay? And uh, before starting anything, how big that number is going to be for n factorial is very close to that number. Okay? So for example, 30 factorial is very close to square root of 2 pi times 30 and 30 divided by 2 uh, e to the 30. So that big number came from this one, right? Because 30 divided by e is 2.7, something like that. So let's just assume it's 3. So this portion is bigger than 10 to the 30, right? So expecting at least 30 zeros for this number, right? So it's more than 30 digits, right? So that much is big number. So to find the factorization of it, ooh, too much. Even to get the notation of 30 factorial, it's quite kind of long procedure, right? Okay, so then how can you get that factors? These are the ideas. So it explains certain things, but the main idea is like this. If there is a prime number, which is a device of n factorial. Since n factorial is multiple of 1, 2, 3, 4, up to n, if any prime fact, uh, number is a factor of this number, which means it must be a factor of at least one of these numbers, right? That's clear, right? So that means if we have, we are, if we are looking for any device of n factorial, it must be a device of one of these numbers. So that p must be less than or equal to n. So the meaning is, if you're looking for the divisor or factor of 30 factorial, then that p must be less than or equal to 30. Right? There are only few of them. So that's the good hint. Like maybe the factorization of 30, I mean, prime factorization of 30 factorial is not going to be a big kind of combination of prime numbers, right? It's only 2 to the something, 3 to the something up to, uh, I think 29 is the largest prime before 30, right? So up to just this much, right? Of course, we need to find those powers. That's the problem. But at least, not that many primes are involved for that. Another one is, uh, The any any if you just choose any prime number, for example, for 30 factorial between 2 and 30, right? So like a 2, 3, 5. If you just find out all these prime numbers up to 30, they must be a factor of n factorial because n factorial is multiplication of those numbers entirely. So just choose one of them becomes a factor of it, right? So because of these two hint. We can think that number like this. Let's just write down 30 factorial. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, going up to 30, right? Then the first thing, first thing we need to check is, okay, how many twos, right? Then that is 2, that is 2 times 2, so we need to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 30, right? You follow me? Okay. But, so how many twos are multiplied into those products? When you look at this, it's every other numbers, right? So how can you calculate it? It's 30 divided by 2. So 15 of them, right? So we have 15 twos already there. But there are actually more than that, because 
then how about two squared? Like four. It's there, right? So once. So meaning is four is two times two, but when you count by multiple of two, and uh, not uh, in that way, we count only one of them. But there is another two as another factor. It's count when you're thinking about multiple of four here, right? So these two times two, each two is a count exactly once at a time by this way, right? Then eight is two times two times two actually. So we count one of them is count already by that, and second one is count now. Okay, so we know it's gonna count like this, right? So in this manner, how many uh, such factors, right, from two squared? So we just divide 30 by 4 because it's every other like a 4 position, right? Like that. Then problem is 30 divided by 4 is not an integer, right? So when you take the division, then like this, so 7 point something, right? Which means there are 7 of these factors, right? So to find only the integer part, it's a floor, so notation looks like this, right? This is bracket style, but we only put the bottom ones only, which means we are only looking for the integer part of it. Okay? So smaller than that number, okay? but the largest integer okay, to that. So it's going to be 7. So the still we have to do, how about 2 cubed, right? Then 8 is multiplied by 2, 2, 2. So we already count 2 of them. So the remaining one should be count here. Then the next one is 16, right? So we have to count that one here. So how many of the such things? We don't want to do this, right? Or procedures, but there is a pattern. The given number n divided by 2, divided by 2 squared, divided by 2 cubed, right? So we can calculate and 30 divided by 2 to the fourth is 16. Okay. And 30 divided by 2 to the fifth. But 2 to the fifth is 30 divided by uh, 32, right? Then it's definitely less than 1, right? Because it's going to be 0 point something. So it's less than 1, which means what? There is no integer value, right? So then we know we have to stop there. Okay? So just adding those numbers all together, that becomes how many twos are in this multiplication, right? So 30 factorial becomes 2 to the, the sum of those numbers, right? Like n divided by 2 plus n divided by 2 squared up to and divide by 2 to the certain number, right? But key point is, you can just adding forever, right? But we are going to get all zeros, right? So it's only reasonable value is something is greater than or equal to 1, right? So we know when we are going to stop here. So that's the factorization by number 2. Then we do the same thing by 3. So same thing. It's going to be n divided by 3 plus n divided by 3 squared and keep doing it, right? And how, how much do we have to, how many cases do we have to check this way? Will it check the factorization, uh, the prime factors of this 30 factorial? The, the prime factors must be going up to just the 30, right? So we know it should end at 29 to this something, right? So that's the entire idea here. Okay. So, for example, 42 factorial is this much big, right? As you can see here. So, if you're looking for just, okay, let's divide this one by 2 and doing something. It, <laughs> if you want, try it. But, okay. So, rather, we know this hint. So, all we need is checking those uh, cases. So, multiple of 3 and 3 uh, square 3 to the cube like that and collection of it and 3 to the fourth is greater than 42 so we know we just stop there so power for the 3 should be 19 so we just write down that away one by one right so these are the results and almost at the end several of them only has only 
power one, only one used once, like that. So that's the entire procedure. And in your homework, you have some uh, questions regarding these steps, right? So please do some practice of it. Okay? okay, so this is about 29 factorial. So let's just check in this way the 29 divided by 2. Then it's uh, 14 something, so it's going to be 14. And 29 divided by 2 squared. Divide by 4, so it's going to be 7 something. And 2 cubed. Divide 29 by 8. So I think it's 3 point something. And 29 divided by 2 to the 4th. So it's a 16, right? Then it's only 1. And 2 to the 5th is 32, so we are going to get zeros, right? So, so we don't need that. So which means the prime factor must be for 2 is 14 plus 7 plus 7, uh, 3 plus 1. Let's do that one by 3, right? And 3, 7, is, no, 3, 9 is 27, so it's 9 point something. And 29 over 3 squared is 9, so it's a 3 point something. And 29 over 2 cubed, so 29 over 27 is 1 point something. And after that, it's going to be 0. So we know it's 3 to the 9 plus 3 plus 1, right? So all together, whatever. And 4 is not a prime number. All we need is just about prime numbers. So it's going to be 5, right? 5 something. And next one is 25, so it's only 1. And we are going to stop there. So 5 to the 5 plus 1. Then after that, it's about 7. So 4, 7 is 28, so it's going to be 4. And next one is 7 squared, which is 49. It's greater than 29, so we don't need it. So it's going to be 7 to the 4th, that's all. Then after that, 29 and 11, then we need 2. And because in the previous case, 7 squared is already greater than 29, so 11 squared must be definitely greater than 29, So which means we don't need to check anything else, right? Just that is the answer. 29, 13 is still 2. So 13 squared and 29 uh, is a 17, right? So in this case, now if you double 27, it's 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 uh, greater than 29, so it's going to be one something, right? So which means after 17, we don't need to check anything. It's going to be the power one, everything. So we just go up to 29, right? So all together, that 29 factorial is going to be Factor 2, 2 to the that, it's uh, 25, right? Times 2 to the, that is 13, and 5 to the 6, and 7 to the 4th, and 11 squared, 13 squared, and starting from 17 is just power 1, so all we need is just multiplying those prime numbers. Uh, there, there might be something more, but I mean, you know what I mean, right? Okay, so, that should be the factorization of 29 factorial. And as you can see here, it's really fast, right? And compared to that relatively big number for 29 factorial. Okay. okay, so the remaining one is just like some some fun stuff. The Goldbars conjecture, I believe any every mathematician will try to to prove this one in their lifetime and it's the one okay. that much famous one and it's a very easy statement so if anyone like even elementary schoolers if they know the definition of prime numbers then they understand what what was the meaning of this one every even integer greater than two can be expressed as the sum of two primes Okay, so 
let's just check it. Okay, I'm going to show it, but like a, every even integer greater than two is starting from two. Then that number is it can be uh, expressed by sum of two primes. Yes, like that. The next even number is six. Then it's sum of three and three. How about eight? Three and five. How about ten? Five and five. How about twelve? Uh, not three nine. How about five seven? Right. And fourteen seven seven. Sixteen five eleven. Can you see that? So just try. It. Even I make uh, some kind of program and check up to one million. Yes, it's true. So everybody like a kind of accepting. Yeah, it's a true statement, but the problem is no one could prove it so far. Yeah, okay. So just try it, okay? And I really kind of challenge you guys to, to do that because maybe some great mathematicians already knew too many things, so they only tried to, uh, to solve this question in that point of view, right? Using just those stuff, right? So maybe they already narrow their mind and narrow their tools that they could use. But for beginner's mind, right, it's not beginner's luck, but like as a beginner's point of view, because they don't have that much enough tools, which means they, they, they have some kind of freedom to think all different ways, right? So when you're thinking about that, you might find really clever idea Right, which is which might be very simple idea, but maybe it just cracked that stuff and could give the mathematical proof of it. Right? So please thinking about it. And in here, let me just show you this. How about up to one hundred? Then not two, right? So these are the possible sum of two prime numbers to get those even numbers. Can you see that? And I believe why it's so difficult to prove. Because the reason is these are not unique. Some cases there are many different sums of two prime numbers to get it, right? So it's difficult to find some patterns among this, right? You have to pick the right pattern, right? To see the relation among this, right? So now compare with the prime factorization. For prime factorization, we have unique way, right? There is no other way. No, just anyone tried, they always got the same result, right? So because of that, we can find some kind of patterns and make some kind of formula out of it. But for this one, because it's not unique, it causes all the trouble, I think. Okay? But anyway, using just this one, you have all the kind of, kind of results and data. I'm just thinking about okay, why, why is always true like that, okay? So please thinking about it. You can get this answer file from course Blackboard. So again, so there are really famous uh, conjectures out there. So Goldbar's conjecture is kind of number one of them. Okay. And the next one is Colette's conjecture. It's quite simple, but it's also amazing. Like you can start from any uh, positive integer k. It could be two, it could be one million, doesn't matter. And we try to make a sequence out of it, which means if the beginning of that number is even, because it's any positive integer, so it could be even or odd, right? So if it's even, then take the half of it to get the next value okay, in the sequence. But if that number is odd, then multiply 3 to that number and adding 1. So if it's even, then the next number is going down right, into half. But if it's odd, then as you can see here, it's multiplied by 3 and plus 1. So it's going up. It's a kind of triple. Okay? So this sequence looks like up and downs, up and downs. And sometimes, of course, if it's really multiple of 2, big numbers, then it's just going down, going down, going down. Some case looks like that, right? So there is no guarantees, like it's always going down or always going up or it's uh, oscillating. Nobody knows. It's depending on what k we start with. But this conjecture claims at certain moment, it must end by number one. So rule is, yeah, whenever you hit number one, you stop there. Okay? 
And this statement says, no matter what number we start with, this sequence is always ended at certain moment. Okay? It doesn't go to forever. So that's the, uh, the this collect conjecture. So let me show you that case. So let's say any number 123, then it this is the sequence, right? So that's the S1, the given first number. Then that is what? Odd, right? So meaning is multiply uh, by 3 and plus 1. <clears throat> and this one actually include the next step too. Because the one of the property of that odd case is when you multiply by 3, the number is odd, right? And plus 1 makes that is even. So the very next step is divide by 2 because of this rule, right? So in this Excel file, we just do all together, right? So it's, it's, it's longer than this sequence, actually. But anyway, so you know what I mean. So the next uh, second uh, double steps later, we are landing on 185. Then that is also odd. <coughs> Excuse me. Then just do again. Then it's even, right? Then the next step is just divide by 2. So keep doing it. Odd, even, odd, even. So no one guarantees it's always going down or always going up. It's just jumping around, up and down, up and down. But when you keep doing it, eventually we are going to land in at 1. So just try any number by that. But how about checking with other cases? So how about 12, 13, 14, right? These are the list okay, of the sequence. Applying that method. How about 123 and 10 numbers after that? Then can you see that? And now you see the strange things, right? Some numbers are really makes long kind of sequence, right? But you're landing on one. The bigger number, the greater number makes longer sequence? No, as you can see here, it just get really short sequence like right? So it's very difficult to find some patterns, right? What's the relation among this? Like that. And amazing thing is, no matter what number you choose, it's always ended by number one. Okay? So that's another uh, the conjecture. So conjecture means in math, conjecture means it's it's looks like it's true right by checking some some examples but haven't proved yet okay no one could prove it that much but people believe that is true sometimes nobody knows whether it's really true or not okay uh, but anyway we cannot prove or disprove in either way okay that that's the meaning of conjecture so that is the famous one again and uh, next one is polynec conjecture it says every odd number can be written as a sum of a power of 2 and 1 odd prime. It's not 2, right? So, that is another Excel file. So let's check for up to 20. So all odd numbers, right? It's the sum of powers of 2 and the odd, uh, odd primes, right? Okay. So, then how about 200? Okay. Go up to all the way, like the way. Okay, so maybe. Uh, the f we have to delete like the first one, right? Except three, right? But because we need one and two. But the other cases are just multiple of twos and odd prime numbers only, right? So that's another strange thing. But that's the conjecture. Okay. So have fun with those. But please pay attention for handling those prime numbers and do the uh, homework. There are only few, but please do.